I'm Roman Meador. I'm responsible for parallel computing at Wolfram Research. And today's talk uh, is about sand pile animations, which has nothing to do with parallelism, but it's a fun mathematical problem, which leads to interesting uh, animations and uh, interesting fractal pictures. Welcome back. Our, our next speaker is Director of Parallel Computing um, of Technology at Wolfram Research, Roman Maeder. Uh, Roman uh, was one of the original developers of Mathematica math 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 and still works on our parallel computing and other Mathematica subsystems. Today, Roman is going to enlighten us on the world of sand pile animations. Roman. Thank you very much. So today I will not talk about anything parallel because these cellular automata are inherently sequential, especially the production of videos. So I rely uh, therefore, on other ways to make things faster. One grain each will flow over into the neighboring, into the four neighboring cells. And if those cells then have more than four grains, it will continue and so on. So eventually, such a toppling sequence will stop with all the cells having less than four grains. And so you can do algebra. There is a, it, it's a Bayesian, so it doesn't matter which order you do the, the evolution. And the question then came up, what, what does a zero look like? Uh, a pile that you can add to another pile that doesn't change it. Now, I was more interested in the evolution of uh, what happens if you just start with four grains in the middle, then obviously next cell, next step, all of the neighboring cells will have one grain, then, then it stops. And so you add four more in the middle. So there will be three. And now you, you see next step, uh, this, uh, unfortunately, the projection is quite a bit smaller than I had anticipated. So you can see it will eventually give more and more complicated, complicated images. And here is the, the obvious color coding that are used from zero to three. And orange is always a cell that's about to topple because it contains too many uh, grains of sand. Now I may have to turn off the slide environment because I don't like all this resizing so now um, a better way is to just superimpose that array with a copy that is shifted to the left to the right and down then all those that need to be added are in the same position and you can just use wow. one addition of the whole array and if that's a packed array then this will be very and instead of moving it to the left, I use uh, a rotation operation. So the indices stay, stay the same, and that's very easy to do. You just keep a row of zeros all around. And so you need to compute, compute the content, content of the array as the old content mod 4. That's what's left when you, this, when you move all the grains out of the cell plus the quotient uh, of mod, mod 4 for all, all the remaining cells, cells and all of the uh, uh, arrangements are symmetric, symmetric so you instead of transposing and rotating you can save work by noting noting that uh, there is no uh, change when you transpose the thing because it's symmetric so here I just need one rotation to the left one rotation to the right and one transposition for the whole operation. And whenever the sand spills into the margin, I add another row, so I grow the array as necessary. So let's see how this, this works. So I start with 1,000 grains in the middle, and then I just evolve it. So they, as long as there is a cell with more than three grains, I just use that topple operation and at the end, I do a simple array plot. So that now there are still 1,000 grains of sand, but they have all been distributed. And you already can see some kind of fractal image forming out of nowhere. And because of the nice mathematical properties, if I want 20,000 grains, I don't have to start over. I just multiply the whole array by 20. So it gives me 20,000 grains and evolve it. It took a bit longer this time, but here is the image with 20,000 grains originally in the middle. And you can even 
uh, save a lot more computing time because uh, this, these images are symmetric, right? There's a fourfold rotational and also a reflection symmetry. So I only need to compute one quarter of this image. And the computation then becomes a little bit more complicated because in the border, in the border I really want to keep the second row also above the center line so I don't have to worry about it and keep the zeros only at the right and at the bottom. So this becomes a bit more complicated. So here is then the updated procedure for toppling such a quarter of an array. Uh, it's just some bookkeeping at the end, but uh, that's not very interesting here. Just wanted to show you how this works. So here is a, such a quarter of an array and I topple it and it has 100,000 grains. And so this temporary output shows you the computation as it goes on. So it's already finished. Now this is only a quarter of the result, so now you need to do some stitching, some reflections for getting the, the whole thing back. And so this uh, is very easy to do. So this is a quite a fast way to do it. So I let it run, run and here's a picture of one million grains of sand with a slightly different color coding used. But uh, I was quite uh, amazed when I first noticed how how the structure of this fractal structure of self-similarity and everything happens out of nowhere. And so then I wondered, well, what, how does it get to this point? What happens along the way? And also, why does it take so long? I mean, if you start with one million grains in the middle, then you will see that it quickly uh, drops down to six, seven grains, but then it takes forever until it has spread out. And it's quite obvious if you think about that the area grows much larger than the border of that area. And so the more grains you have, and eventually the only way to have less than four grains everywhere is to push the sand out, right? And so it takes more and more time to actually do that because everything you see here in yellow is three grains, so these are all full, full uh, filled. So if you move one grain into such an area, it will have to trigger a whole sequence until it eventually drops out at the other end. And so that, this is why it takes so long. And then I wanted to see how this actually happens. And so here is one of these sequences. So this is an intermediate step where there were 32,599 32, grains. And you can see in the middle, I've added one more. And now, just watch this single toppling sequence that happens for the single grain added. And amazingly, this sequence takes 2,319 steps until it dies down. And it's, it's quite, I mean, it, I've never, I never expected something like that. So I cannot, I don't have the time to let it run to completion here, but uh, you can see kind of eventually will we'll, uh, find its way all the way to the, now here it, you can see it comes to the, now here it builds something interesting and so on. So, <clears throat> so this is quite, was quite unexpected when I saw this first. But then I thought, well, what happens if I don't start with an empty grid? What, do I, what happens if I start with a grid, a square with three grains in each cell? Then you can imagine when you add one grain, that sequence will take a long time. You can see here, this, this is what happens to the A after cell. Now, of course, the next step, all the four neighbors will have four grains. And in the step after that, four of them will be back in the center and also spreading outwards. So you see these ripple effects. Uh, so this is all that happened from adding a single grain. Eventually it stops. And now at this point, I would then add four more grains and see what happens after that. And so here is that sequence. So here is an array, almost critical, three grains everywhere. And now I add a single one to the center and one more as, as, as soon as necessary. So here's the second one. And here's the third. For, sometimes it dies quickly, but then come these waves. 
So here is a longer wavelength. And you can see if you watch the center, the center always regenerates itself exactly. So it is an oscillator, a fractal oscillator in the center. And depending on the period of that oscillator, you get closer uh, waves or waves that are further apart. I mean, you could watch that all day. <laughs> 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 because, I mean, it's. I mean, if you watch long enough, you will see even more, even fancier, fancier cases than, than this particular one. So, uh, so I did actually produce the video on YouTube. Now uh, you will f find the link here. I. So here is exactly that uh, that thing with a la somewhat larger array, and it go. I mean, I can. I'm not sure whether you can see. Okay, so I mean, here is. So that's after 15 minutes. That's <laughs> after. <laughs> Uh, so I mean, it's it, it's it's really crazy. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, okay. So well, I, sh I should I should stop here. I mean, you can watch that for yourself. <laughs> you will find the link here. Uh, the other thing I did is start with a different initial condition of. Uh, now this, this is a disk in the Manhattan metric, right? Where you. And because I don't go diagonally with the sand, the correct metric to use is the Manhattan metric, where you're going only go left or right or up and down. And so this is the, is a disk in that metric, which means it will hit the border at the same time and just reflect back to the center. So this is even even crazier, crazier images. I can move this. So after 20 minutes, you have something like this. And it will eventually build more of these and go out and come back. And I mean, it's, it's really, it's really crazy. I mean, it's, and I mean, the, the system is so simple. Now, of course, in the, in the Wolfram, in the orbit of, of Stephen Wolfram, you would not be surprised by complicated behavior out of simple systems. But still, what the kind of complication you, you uh, that came completely unexpected. Now, the way I produced these videos, I used, I produced individual frames using the uh, array plot, as you have seen here, and then used export to uh, some bitmap format, PNG, and then you, I used the tool FFmpeg, which is a kind of Swiss army knife for video production, to assemble these frames into an MP4 movie that was uh, acceptable for upload to YouTube. And so this is how I produced uh, these videos. I then went on and so well, square is not the only regular arrangement you can do. You could also use hexagons for a completely regular arrangement. So then I, and then of course you will have up to five uh, grains of sand and you will spill, up, spill over multiples of six. And it gives, I mean, qualitatively it's the same, but of course you have even fancier colors. And uh, I haven't produced the video here yet. I will do so uh, within the next few days and upload those. So what I've done is I've put those in my YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel is this one. And I was careless enough to use my proper spelling of my name here. So it's probably easier if you use the shortened version if you want to access that. <laughs> and then I thought, well, the original model was about uh, sand piles and how, how they evolve. So it would be perhaps be interesting to see something which has a con concave corner where you could actually see the sand spilling over. I mean, it's not, it's not a terribly realistic model of, of uh, how sand would behave. But still, I, I, want, I was uh, interested in, in seeing whether I could see some of those effects. And then when I came up with the simplest possible uh, uh, concave uh, corner here, I thought, well, that this is very similar to the flag of my home country. And so that, <laughs> that's why I, that's why I start, that's why I use a different color scheme here. So I use uh, red for, for, the, for the background. And then, uh, 
it's quite amazing what happens here with these all these reflections and everything here going on. So I can just uh, leave that running and answer your uh, questions <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> because I mean this is this is just I mean it's it, it's a fun uh, fun uh, project to do. Uh, the only real contribution here was the really figuring out a very efficient way of of computing those uh, using the symmetries and using the rotations to take advantage of the uh, of the packed array. So I, I mean, of course, the next thing would be to compile it. But then again, the computation of the frames takes only tenths or so of the time that the rendering takes. So I really don't have to spend any more time on making the rendering more efficient because the frames uh, and for the hexagonal case, I actually ended up dumping the raw arrays to individual Wolfram language files and then have separate processes that would read the files and render them. And those, of course, could then run in parallel. So that was a way to uh, get the cheap uh, parallelism. But other than that, the process is inherently sequential. So I had a lot of fun uh, experimenting with different initial conditions and uh, just seeing kind of crazy things that so happens answer. with all of those. Yes, any question? Is there an answer? Sorry? Is there an answer? No, 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 no. It, I mean, you see, every time it dies down, I add four more gains in the middle. And so I let it continue. I mean, each, each toppling sequence, mm -hmm. this is a single sequence that goes on for a certain amount of time. But at some point, it will die down without any orange. And now I add a new one to the center, and then it, go, it, 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 uh, it, it, it goes on. So it grows and grows. I mean, each individual one will stop, but uh, I then add more, more, more to the center and, and let it uh, continue. So this is how I produce the, the, ongoing, the ongoing animations. Any more questions? Yes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did that actually only two days ago when we were in the, in the, in the Wolfram office. I suddenly thought, well, I should do something like that. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, the, 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 the normal square is, 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 is fancy, but I mean, with, with all these reflections, with all these corners, you get a lot more thing uh, going on. I haven't, I haven't tried it, but of course, I mean, the there's nothing inherently symmetric about, about the, the model. So, yes, I could. I could start with with any initial condition. It was just for for the visual appeal. I used I used the symmetric. I mean that's the easiest model. You just add the, the sand to the middle, and then it always becomes symmetric. But you could use a line, or you could use any any initial condition. The, the cellular automaton framework is not very suitable for this because you have potentially a lot of a lot of states, and so just I mean. Because, I mean, you have five cells with between zero and seven grains. Mm -hmm. And so you have lots of state, but so the, the actual computation using those additions and modulo operation is a lot faster. It, it's very easy. I mean, it's, it's five lines of code, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five lines of code plus, plus uh, uh, the uh, array, array plot. And the array plot has one important parameter, that's yeah. pixel constraint which allows you to map the, the cells to an even number, to an integer number of pixels. Otherwise, you will get this wavy uh, in interference and everything. Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, the, the problem is the, the visualization. I mean, you, you would have to use transparency and uh, uh, what, what's, the, what, what's it called it in, in, in 3D vision, the, uh, the model where you can see partly through blobs or... Opacity, yes, you would, you would have to use opacity, yes. The propagation of, of those grains of sand happen along the four main direction, up, down, left, and right. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a square array, just a matrix, an n by n matrix of between zero and seven. Oh. No, I, I, do, I, I compute all the uh, interactions at the same time, because I compute, I compute uh, I compute four shifted copies of that array, shifted left, right, up, and down. And then I can just add all those together that correspond to the same position 
in the same way. In the, and with a packed array, this translates into a single operation done in essentially machine code inside the Wolfram language kernel. So I don't have to program a loop. That's the main, that's the main point. I use packed arrays and I add arrays directly. The, the whole operation, it doesn't matter in which order you do it. I mean, I have to ob obviously use the old copy everywhere and then update the copy. Yes, I mean, that's, so I, com I compute the new version concurrently and then I update it with the new version. Yes, I mean, you, you cannot go line by line and, and update in place. No, you, no, I cannot, I do not update in place, no. I have a new copy every, for every iteration. I mean, this, this is of course very similar to other models like forest fire models or standard cellular automaton models where propagation of properties and so on. I mean, yes, I mean, I could, I mean, the question is sometimes it, it's more efficient to write up the rules for the cellular automaton and then use the built-in cellular automata code. But for, but here I think it, it, it's more efficient to just write the code using using that idea as soon as whenever you have something like where you only use the four main directions you can use that idea of, of shifting four copies of the array and whether, whether you i mean this is a and you can program the function whether it's simple adding one here and subtracting it here or you have something complicated that can you use this for real life uh -huh. well what is a real life problem? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it would be interesting to see whether some of what I mean, there are models for these kinds of phenomena where how an actual pile of sand would behave when it becomes unstable. Something like that would be a real life version of or an avalanche forming, how an avalanche would form. Uh, quicksand, yes, would be another. I mean, yes, I mean, the, uh, I think there are many models of this kind where change happens concurrently, but is local. Yeah. And any such simulation can be, can be done using these ideas. I think they have the same properties. Uh, it's independent of the order and uh, local and concurrent. So, Yes, I mean the, the same idea can be used for any, for simulation of any of these any of these problems. Okay, okay. Thank you.